Welcome everyone to an iPhone recorded video. We're still doing a past exam question, uh, which is a Zimsic past exam paper. And the topic is more on flex budgets. This is a November 2015 paper three question, and it's question number four for reference sake. So if you're joining us, please actually go and see the first video which dealt with the first part of this question if you are following us then again welcome so we're going to be doing the second part of the question which relates to a uh, flexed uh, the flex budget part so if you were with us all along you will notice that we prepared the original budget based on the information that we were given. And this is how our answer looked like. So this was our original budget based on 2000 units of production or level of activity was 2000 units. So this is our original budget. So the second part of the question required us to prepare for the quarter ending for the quarter ending 31 July 2014, a flexed, a flexed budget, all right, based on the actual number of discs manufactured and sold. This whole part was not necessary because whenever you're preparing your flex budget, most of the times you're going to be using your actual level of activity. That's the one that you use to flex um, your budget. So this was just more or less a hint for students to know that when you're preparing this flex budget, you're supposed to use the actual number of discs. So remember when we started this question, when I said that this key, this piece of information was really key, the number of discs produced and sold based on actual data. So that is going to be our major reference point when we're now preparing our flex budget. So always remember when you're preparing a flex budget, you are preparing your budget based on your actual level of activity. All right. And the reason why you're doing this is because when it comes to your variance analysis, you want your variance analysis to actually make sense because you can't be comparing your actual figures with the original um, budget when your actual level of activity was actually different from the budgeted level of activity. All right, so always remember this, when you're preparing a flex budget, you are using your actual level of activity. When they ask you to prepare a flex budget, it means that there has to be an original budget. So the original budget that you have is sort of like your structure or your format. So this original budget that we have is our structure or format. When we prepare our flex budget, it's going to have this same structure or format, all right? Albeit the level of activity is the one that's going to be different, but the structure and the format remains the same. So if you are actually in our lessons, you notice that we did a lot of examples where we were comparing budgeted and also flexing um, those budgeted information based on the actual level of activity. And some of the costs were variable costs, some of the costs were fixed costs, some of the costs were actually semi variable costs, costs that contain both the fixed component and the variable component. So we had to actually split those based on the high-low method to actually identify which is the fixed component in the given in the given cost and which is the variable uh, cost component. All right. So I'll try and attempt this question from the right side, from the left side of my board. So they require us to prepare a flex budget for the three months ending 31 July, 2014. 
So remember, when you're always writing a statement or answering a question, always state the name of the company. This is Abbott Limited. They gave you that name for a reason in the exam. It's not for sure. It's for you to apply. So they requires, requires to prepare a flexed budget for the three months ending 31 July 2014. So what I'm going to do is to also put or really state what our actual level of activity is or actual production. And we are given in this question, our actual level of activity or production is 2,200 units. This is what we actually produced. And I'm also going to actually highlight that because this is going to be our reference point. Always make sure that you are cognizant of the time that's available for you in the exam. As I said before, the exam doesn't just test your knowledge or application skills. It also tests your time management skills as well. All right, and I said, you're always supposed to state the currency that you are given in the question. This helps the users of the financial statement and also the examiner as well. So your life goes on after the exam, okay? So you also have to be able to do it right, always. So we now want to prepare our flex budget. We said our flex budget is a budget in which you are now preparing based on your actual level of activity. So remember, when you prepare your original budget, let's say you want to prepare a budget for 2022, okay? We're going to prepare it in 2021. And we're gonna say, okay, fine, 2022, this is how we expect. So let's say this is what we expect, right? This is what we expect. So when these guys, Abbott Limited, prepared their budget, they prepared a budget for 2014, okay? For the quarter ending 2014. And this is what they expected. So most likely they were in 2013 and they said, okay, fine. Let's do some estimates or run some numbers on how our performance will be in 2014. So they ran the numbers and this is what they were expecting in 2014. Okay, so this is the budget, the original budget. But then what actually transpired? This is what actually transpired. Information over here. This is what actually happened. Okay, but there's something key or important that you have to know. When Abbott Limited prepared the original budget. They were expecting, when they prepared the original budget, they were expecting to produce and sell 2,000 units. This is where we got it here. Okay, but what actually happened? When 2014 came, what actually happened during the same period was that Abbott Limited actually produced 2,200 units. Okay, so Abbott Limited cannot compare these actual results, actual results and the original budget because they were prepared based on different production levels or levels of activity. The level of activity for your budget was 2,000 units. The level of activity that actually transpired or happened was 2,200 students. So 
when you're not doing your variance analysis to see if the business actually performed well, you can't be comparing this original budget, which was based on 2000 units with what actually happened where you actually produced and sold 2200 units. It's like comparing apples with bananas. You can't really compare the two. Okay, so for comparability purposes, you want to have information that is comparable. You then have to flex this original budget or sort of like re-prepare this original budget based on 2,200 units, not the 2,000 units you had originally prepared. Okay, so that's the need for flexing the budget. So that's how you then flex. You're saying, okay, fine, I now need to adjust my original budget so that I prepare it based on 2,200 units, which are the units that were actually produced rather than the 2,000 units, okay? So that is what you're trying to do. When you now have your flex budget, the flex budget is the one that you compare with your actual results or actual performance for you to see if you actually performed well or performed bad badly when you're not doing your variance analysis. So we now want to prepare our flex budget. Again, I will reiterate and state that when you're preparing your flex budget, it is based on your actual level of activity or production. The structure of your original budget is the same when you're now preparing your flex budget. So our structure, how does our structure look like? It starts with sales. So you come over and you write your sales. We already know our budgeted cost. We already know our budgeted cost. Our budgeted cost, or already, sorry, we already know our budgeted sales uh, price. Our budgeted sales price is $63. So $63, which is our budgeted price, $63 times, we are going to say $63. So we already know our budgeted selling price, which is $63. We are going to multiply that by 2,200 units, which is the actual units we actually produced. It's no longer 2,002. It's no longer 2,000 units that budgeted. And we get 138,600. And then we say less. Cost of sales. Remember, I said this the same structure we have for our original budgeted statement is the same structure that the flex budget takes. So please don't get confused. So we've got direct materials. Remember when we calculated our direct materials, we got our unit cost as $12 here. It is the same. When you go to your original budgeted manufacturing income statement, we've got our unit cost here of $12 for direct material. For direct labor, our unit cost is $24. So we're going to take those and apply them in our flex budget. The budgeted unit cost does not change. So direct materials, $12 per unit. We are going to multiply that by our actual production, actual level of activity, which is 2,200 units. And we're gonna get 26,400. For direct labor, we know that our unit cost is $24 based on this question. We already calculated that and we got it here. 
$24. This is our direct labor cost per unit. So we're gonna say $24, which is the budgeted unit cost times the actual level of activity, which is 2,200. And we get 52,800. And then we go to our production overhead. Remember, we've got a variable component and a fixed component. Variable means that as our level of activity changes, the variable costs will also change. So it's so sort of like if it increases, our variable costs will increase. If our level of activity decreases, our variable cost will also decrease. So it changes with the level of activity. So we know our variable cost per unit. Did we manage to calculate that one? Yes, we know our variable cost per unit is 45 over 60 times $10. All right, 45 over 60 times $10. So we know that one already. So we're going to say 45 over 60, which is the number of minutes it takes to produce number of hours it takes to produce one product. Remember, we're told here that for us to produ produce one product, it takes 45 minutes. So if it takes 45 minutes to produce one product, if it takes 45 minutes to produce one product, it then literally means that So we really know that it takes 45 minutes to produce one computer disk. So it's 45 minutes of direct labor. So we can literally say 45 over 60 for us to convert it into hours, okay? So that's the time that is required to produce one, one unit. And we're then told in terms of variable production overhead that it is $10 per direct labor hour. So we multiply this times the $10. And then we multiply by the number of units, which is 2,200 units. And this gives us 16,500. And then we go to the fixed component. Remember, fixed costs remain constant over a given period, usually in the short term. All right, they remain constant, even though the level of activity varies. This is usually within a given period. So remember, when we calculated using our original budget, we got our fixed cost as $18,000. They remain the same, they do not change. Okay, they remain the same, they do not change. Even if we're given a fixed production overheads here of 20,000, these are actual, all right. We, based on our budget, they do not change. So we're going to take the fixed cost we got for original budget. And write them over here. So we then add these costs and we get 113,700. This is our production cost. So we can do the same calculations we did before. Based on your markup or we just say sales less our cost of sales for us to get our gross profit and our gross profit becomes 24,900. We then list our expenses and 
and we've got selling overheads that we have. Remember, we did not include our selling overheads in the cost of production because they did not form part of your production. Okay, selling overheads, they are more a demand or selling in a demand, right? They are not, a, you don't, the cost that you incur, these selling overheads, you incur them when you are actually selling the product, not when you are making the product. Okay, so the cost that go into your manufacturing account or the production cost, these are the costs that you incur when you are making the product. Any other costs, they come to your general expenses in your income statement. So these are selling overheads. Again, they are expli explicitly stated in this question. Budgeted fixed selling overheads for the same period is $8,000. So this is what we're going to subtract in our answer. Less $8,000. And if we subtract that, we get our net profit. And our net profit becomes what? $16,900. So this is our net profit. So this is our flex budget for the three months ending 31 July, 2014. This is how it is supposed to look like. And this is as, this is as it comes. It usually doesn't come much more difficult than this, but this is the whole concept of flexing the budget. All right, so whenever you now start or you now want to do your variance analysis, when we're saying variance analysis, you're comparing your flexed budget performance versus your actual performance. And you see if you either performed well or performed badly as a business. So you do your variance analysis based on your flexed budget performance. So this flex budget that we have, these figures that we've got, are the ones that we're going to compare with our actual data or actual performance and see if we're performing well or performing badly. If we're performing badly, then we'd need to take corrective action so that we improve the performance of the business. So in terms of variance analysis, that's another concept that we'll then do later on. I really hope that you enjoyed this iPhone recorded video. And please do hit the subscribe button. And if you actually want further to learn further, please also try and engage us so that um, we can learn together and help improve um, your performance in the exam. I wish you all the best and goodbye.